Welcome to Microsoft 365 Defender. Well, we're going to jump in and we're going to get to know Defender. All the applications and the security products that make up Defender is kind of a family of products. And how we can use it to secure our environments, not only our on-premise, but also our in-the-cloud environments in Microsoft's cloud services. So with no further ado, let's get to know Microsoft 365 Defender a little better. So what is Defender? Well, Defender is a suite of products, and that's pretty key. And there's four primary products that make up the suite, and they are all Microsoft Defender for something. So we'll put Microsoft Defender for, and let's get to know these four products. Well, of course, we've got to have Office 365 because we use it quite often, don't we? We use the Microsoft products and we use Teams to communicate. We use things like OneDrive and SharePoint and of course all the Word, Excel, PowerPoint and all those applications as well. And we need to protect those products. And how do we do that? Well, we use Microsoft Defender 4, you guessed it, Office 365. And where do we run all those Microsoft Office apps? Well, of course, on our endpoints. That's right, that's our endpoints out there. That's our PCs, our Macs, our Linux hosts, our iOS devices. So that's our tablets and our computers. And we can actually have like our little phones there that can run these apps. And we can run endpoint on those devices. So Microsoft Defender 4, our endpoints. And then, of course, we need identity. We've talked about identity in courses before. We're talking about like identity and access management or IAM that we use to control who has access to what within our environments? Well, identity is a key piece of not only our on-premise environments, but also our cloud environments, of course, because we need to define who out there can go and access those different resources in our environments. And that's all done through our identity. So we need Microsoft Defender for identity. That's right. And then lastly, cloud apps, because as we move more and more apps to the cloud, we subscribe to these apps that are out there in the cloud. Well, we need to protect those apps. So we have Microsoft Defender 4 cloud apps, and we're going to get into each of these. Don't worry about it right now. I'm just explaining to you that, you know, there's actually four separate products that make up Microsoft 365 Defender. Now, what about licensing? Because there's always licensing involved. So let's look at the licensing requirements quickly. So what do we have here? Well, there's an entire list of licenses that you could use to access these resources, our Microsoft 365 Defender resources. So you've got Microsoft 365 E5 or A5. But if you were in the E3 levels, like with 365 E3, you can actually get a security add-on, the E5 security add-on, or enterprise mobility and security add-on. And if you're in the A3s, well, you can do another add-on. So what I'm trying to get you to understand here, there's lots of different types of licensing that you can use to access these resources. And this is a comprehensive list of them directly from Microsoft documentation. So those are our licensing requirements. So if we got licenses, so now we can access it. But the big question is, who can access it? <laughs> so we come down to permissions. And really, right off the bat, I want you to understand there's two different ways to manage access to Defender. And that is, number one, you can use your Azure Active Directory roles, or you can create custom roles. Those are really the two key points to take away from this slide here. When it comes to permissions, you can use your global AZ Directory roles, that's your Azure Active Directory roles, or you can create custom roles. However, within your global Azure AD roles, these roles down here can access and use certain aspects of Defender, such as your global administrator, your security administrator. Then you've got operators and readers. Now, of course, your reader accounts down here, they can't make changes or anything. They can only read the data that is there. So that'd be great for looking at reports and such. So that is the required permission. So, so far we've looked at the four different products that make up Microsoft 365 Defender. We looked at our licensing requirements, and then we looked at our permission requirements. So now that we know which apps it is, we know what licensing we need and what permissions we need. Well, let's take a look at Microsoft Defender documentation to see what kind of bells and whistles and gadgets it brings to the party. 
All right, here we are on the Microsoft 365 Defender uh, web page. Really, it's going to tell us all about it and what to experience. And really, here we've got the Microsoft 365 Defender services that we just talked about, Endpoint, Office 365, Identity, and Cloud Apps. But here's really what I want to get into, the Defender protection. So we've got Endpoint protection here, email and collaboration protection with Office 365, because here with this Office 365 protection, we're protecting like things like Teams and SharePoint and OneDrive, where we're protecting collaboration. That is a big part of that. And of course, protecting identities to protect our Azure Active Directory. And we're going to take a look at these features in a live environment later on in this course. And then, of course, we've got applications such as cloud apps where we're protecting our applications. And as we scroll down, we can actually take a look. They've got a couple of screenshots here of Microsoft 365 Defender Portal here. And we see this is actually the incidents page that we're going to look at shortly. And where we're getting to look at an incident and some information about it. Uh, here's the advanced threat hunting where we can create queries and we can query across multiple applications because this data all goes to the same place in the back end so that we can actually query across these products pretty darn handy. So one of the key points is a cross product single pane of glass that they're saying here. And that's because, again, all these applications, those four applications, their data on the back end is all commingled so that you can use these threat hunting and these dashboards and such to see across all four of them. You don't have to jump between them, which is super cool. Of course, we have a combined incidents queue, and that kind of goes along the same line. So if you have an email or a SharePoint incident or a defender for endpoint incident, guess what? They all end up in the same place. You don't have to jump around to different portals and dashboards. There's also automatic response to threats. And we're gonna look at that. That's known as AIR, Automated Incidents Response, so that when something happens, it can be automated. The resolution or remediation can be automated so that we can immediately fix that problem. And as part of that is known as self-healing, where playbooks are used as part of the automated incident response, and we'll look at that as well. And of course, cross-product threat hunting. So this is where we, if I scroll back up here, you see this advanced hunting image here. We're going to look at that because we can set up alerts as well with threat hunting. But the idea here is you have all this data that's taking place among these four solutions. And with all the data that they're providing us with, all the events that are happening, all that log data, well, we're going to be able to search through it. And we're going to be able to create alerts on certain things. And it comes with a whole bunch of predefined searches for us. So we don't have to do everything from scratch, which is very handy. And that is the intro to Microsoft 365 Defender. So now that you know a little bit about it, what do you say we jump into the Microsoft 365 Defender portal and actually look and see what's in there so that we can better learn how to start using it? I will see you in the next video. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.